Hola, Hola bon, bon dia. dia. We had another busy week and made some good progress renovating our ruin. When should we stop calling it a ruin? I feel like it's almost a proper house now. You can call me a ruin. <laughs> I'm a disaster. Yeah, but you're a hot mess. That's true. Christina asked me to drywall or plasterboard the bathroom uh, before she hangs the new curtains. Um, so I got the drywall up. Uh, I ran out of mud though to do the seams. <laughs> Abuse! Uh, so I'll be, I'll be finishing the mudding and sanding this coming week. So I've been ordered to do some work today because, uh, you know, we haven't done much lately. So I figure I better do something before I get murdered. So today I'm supposed to drywall this wall or plasterboard. First, I got to take the shutters off and I got to remove all the tile along the bottom because when we put the new floor in, we're just going to put a baseboard. So yeah. That's what I got to do today. So now I gotta take this tile trim off the bottom. So that should be fun. So I've measured and cut the first piece of drywall for that bathroom wall here. That's the exterior wall. Uh, just like we did in the kitchen. So I've already cut, measured, and spray foamed. And now I'm just going to stick it to the wall and hope for the best. Okay, second piece. It's going on the bottom right underneath the window. I gotta glue it, so a little bit of glue. There we go, just like that. And then you let it sit for a minute or two to get tacky. And then I'll stick it on the wall. And there you go. 
Bathroom is drywalled on the outside wall. I ran out of mud, so I can't completely mud it. Let's go get some more mud. But uh, that's it, it's done. We'll be framing the window in here in wood once I clean it all up. And then there'll be some trim on the outside. And uh, yeah, and the gaps I filled in, I just filled in with foam. All here, I'll cut that off to level it out. And then it'll be wood cladding, like a frame all the way around and then a piece of trim on the outside and that's it done grant did an amazing job with the drywall and it already looks brighter and cleaner in her bathroom so this is what it looked like before and <laughs> no not you and then this is what it looks like now <laughs> he also removed the rest of the lime wash from the wall in the kitchen and this time he used the sanding attachment on the angle grinder, which means it went a lot faster, but it made a lot of dust. So, so after much grinding and dust, this side of the kitchen is now done. Now we just need to, I guess, prep it and paint it. While Grant was making a dusty mess in the kitchen, I was busy refinishing the nightstand and I had to sand the top again because Miss Murder Mittens decided to scratch the top and mark it up. She knows she's in trouble. Come on. Miss Murder Mittens. Yeah, she likes to scratch wooden furniture for some reason, so. She, so we made all our furniture wooden. Of course. And she got her little mitts on it before I stained and varnished it. So, yeah. Fun times. Anyway, it's finally ready to be stained and painted. So I'll be doing that next week. And the weather is still hot and sunny. So that means I was ginger tanning in on the nightstand so yeah I was in my bikini again in the shade <laughs> well no I would go out for like five minutes in the sun and then back into the wood shop ginger tanning, ginger tanning. So I decided to go ahead and use the orbital sander to speed it up. I used 150 grit and I was able to take enough off that all of the scratch marks are gone. So I will do the rest of the finishing by hand. So I will go back in with the 180 with the sanding block. The problem that I see with using this top um, without a veneer on it is that the wood is a bit softer. So the wood that is on top here is a soft wood. And I think normally you would have a hardwood for a tabletop. So we'll see how it stands up. If it doesn't, doesn't last well, then I can always paint it later with any wood that is not treated so it doesn't have a uh, wood stain or wax or some kind of coating or protection if you get water on it then the grain of the wood is going to graze so that is what i'm doing right there you can see it doesn't take much and is nice and smooth. So, so this let's get right in here has already been sanded, whereas these ones have not. So you can see that the grain of the wood is more raised on these two, and then the one that I have sanded looks a little bit shinier and smoother. 
So that is all I'm doing, just going over quickly to take any uh, raised portion of the wood grain so off. So you just tightly roll your sandpaper so that it folds a round shape. And, and it's all smooth out. So I already did the first layer of filler on the wood here where it's damaged. So I dug out any hunky soft pieces of wood in here as well as here. So I scraped out where it was damaged and then filled it with this wood filler. The wood filler seems to be separated a bit, so I've been mixing it in a plastic container before I apply it. Otherwise, it's, yeah, I'll show you. So you can see it's very liquidy and runny, and then you have the actual wood filler. So I've just been putting it into the container and mixing it up a little bit before I use it. So now I'm going to try and fill the rest of this. So this is the biggest gouge out of the wood here. Small one at the front. Now I just bought this wood filler, but I think it's a bit old. So fortunately it sands really easily, so I'm just trying to get the wood filler to cover all of the space, and then I'll worry about evening it out afterwards with the sandpaper. So yeah, it doesn't look very good right now, but I'm going to let that dry for about an hour and then I can come back and sand it. So it's been over an hour and the wood filler is now dry. So I'm going to start sanding. So I'm going to start with uh, 120 grit sandpaper. So now you can see the portion that was damaged is filled in and it is now even with the surface of the wood. So it is ready for painting. You've seen us working at our friend's property over the past month or so and we're starting to get more cleaning and general maintenance jobs. Yes, so let us know if you need any lawn maintenance or painting or smaller jobs done. Um, we travel within about 100 kilometers of Palm Ball, so roughly a two-hour drive maximum. And this is what we did this week. So we have a small job to do here, cleaning up the construction area. So just tidying up this area here. And I think we need to move these as well. So yeah, this is what it looks like before. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> so this is what it looks like now.
We cleaned all of the bracken. And we have everything stacked neatly off to the side here. And that's what it looks like all tidied up. We managed to very carefully pry up the grate off of the drains or the guttering for outside. And this section has already been cleaned. Now I've started cleaning this side and you'll see a lot of what is in here is cement dust. And then when it does get wet, so it's making like a lumpy layer on the bottom of the guttering. I'm just using a piece of wood. To remove the layer of cement dust that has started to harden along the bottom. So it is coming off in chunks. And then you have the nice smooth finish of the guttering again. So we'll have this done in a few minutes. And the outdoor kitchen area is all clean and tidy. And we'll just finish cleaning out the rest of the gutters next week. So another job done. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Please give us a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Take care and stay tuned for more renovation shenanigans next week. Okay, okay bye! bye.